Research. Hi, my name's Gene Saunders. I'm the uh, Golf Club Product and Fitting Manager for Titleist here in Southeast Asia. Uh, we've got some amazing new SM6 wedges. Um, very different to SM5. We've got three key technological aspects that have really changed. Uh, we've got some new grooves, a new TX4 grooves, which are going to give us more spin and more control coming into and around the greens. We've got uh, Bob Vokey's two approved grinds, five grinds in all. That gives us the most complete range of grinds in the industry. That gives us the ability to fit any player regardless of their swing type, their shot preferences or their course conditions. And a really big change this time around is progressive center of gravity, something very new for wedges. So we've got a flip center of gravity almost on its head here and that's going to give us better distance control uh, and gapping between our clubs. It's going to give us better flights and flight control and it's going to give the player better feel and feedback when hitting their shots. Okay, so we've, uh, we've changed quite a few things around in the wedges to be able to push the center of gravity to where we want it. So what we wanted to do is put the center of gravity in the position where the player is going to impact it. So as the, we get more loft, the player starts to hit down more. Also, because the angle of the face gets more, players start to hit higher up the more loft we get. So with, let's say, our 46 wedge, we want to have it down a little bit lower than what we do in our 62. So progressively as we go through the set, the center of gravity moves up a little bit through our irons, and we take the same technology now into our wedges. There's three different ways that we're doing that. The first is progressive head sizes. So a little bit in our, uh, in our pitching wedges are just a little, little tiny, but just a hair smaller than previously, and they slowly just increase. That helps us a little bit. Progressive hosel length as well, just a little bit shorter again in the pitching wedges, gap wedges, sand wedge, maintaining the same there in the 60s. So also another big way that we've done it is changing around the weights in the back. So if we take a look at the back here, it's a little, maybe a little hard to see on the camera, but maybe if I hold on this angle, we can see there's a little material taken out of the top here. So that's, we keep that in our pitching wedges and our gap wedges. As we move into the sand wedge, we're pretty comfortable with the CG, sorry, where the CG was on our, uh, on our sand wedges, and we kept it pretty, pretty simple in the back there. Just changed a tiny bit with the hosel length here to help us out with just a little change there. And then as we move into the lob wedges where we wanted to pull CG up higher, we kept the hosel length because that helps us pull CG up and put the weight pad at the top here. So technology you can see that makes a big difference in the positioning of that center of gravity up or down the face. The reason we want to do, change that center of gravity is when we can impact on center of gravity, we get better ball speed. That's where we get our better, our better distance and distance gapping. It gives us better trajectory control and it also gives the player a much better feel. So we have five different grinds in the SM6 wedges. Uh, in SM5, we had five grind, uh, six, sorry, this time around going with five. The T grind in the 62 has been replaced with the M. So why do we have different grinds? We have different grinds because everybody hits it differently and it's hit differently in different, different sections of the bag. By having the five different grinds, that gives us the ability to be able to suit every player regardless of their attack angle or swing type, how they like to play their, their shots, open or closed face, and then also the course conditions that they play in. So the first of our grinds which we, which we use in pitching wedge right through to sand wedge is the F grind. F is our, is our full grinder, our traditional sole wedge. It's designed for the player that likes to play, we're gonna play in a square position with this one. It gives us a, a nice feel, a nice consistency through the turf. Uh, we offer that one in, in pitching wedge uh, in eight degrees bounce. In gap wedges, we do it in eight and 12 to help out players with different angles of attack. And then as we move into the sand wedge, it becomes our high bounce option in 14. So the second grind that we have, and this is that we're going to talk about, and that's, this is probably our most popular wedge, is the M grind. The M is a very versatile grind. It has uh, material removed out of the trailing edge, the heel and the toe, which gives uh, players the ability to play a lot of shots. It's a nice shot makers club, particularly in that mid to lower bounce section. Uh, it has a, a mid-bounce accompaniment in the S grind. The S does a very similar job to the M in terms of bounce, just a little bit more bounce, however, but it's more to suit the player who plays with a predominantly square face. And then we move up into the K grind where we're on the players who tend to play a little bit square. The K grind has a nice wide sole and makes it a fantastic bunker club, but it's more than just a bunker club. It has a lot of camber or curve on the bottom of the sole. What that does is that gives it great 
great versatility out of the bunker as well. So it almost acts almost like a variable bounce, so we can play it off quite tight lies as well. And then we move into the L. The L is uh, very similar in terms of the player it suits to the M, but it's much lower bounce. So it's for the player that really is that slider sweeper style of player, or a very skilled player that likes it, again, like the M grind, hit a lot of shots, either open, closed faced, moving the face around. The ability to have all those different grinds really means that for every player, you know, no matter what, what their playing style, we're going to be able to help them to find the SM6 wedge to make their game better. We have uh, some new grooves in SM6. We call them our TX4 grooves. So we've taken what we learned in SM, SM4 and SM5 and just taken it to the next level. Um, we've, first big change is that we've changed the way that we machine our face. So previously we had a, a radial or a round milling style. We've now got a parallel face texture. Now the reason that we change that is that that allows us to have tighter groove radiuses and get more surface area onto the ball when we're hitting our shots. That allows us to get more spin on all shots. The f we still want to have face texture though because face texture helps us around the green. So our new parallel face texture allows us to have the best of both worlds. More spin and control on our long shots and keep that up around the greens also. We have three new finishes, or two, two new finishes, uh, and our trusty to a chrome. The traditional look that, you know, it, it is the favorite look out there uh, of many players, but we know that, you know, this sound and this feel and this aesthetic isn't for everyone. And that's why we always like to offer different options in the wedges, particularly when we get into the scoring part of the, the game. We know, uh, we know that every player is different in what they like to see, what they like to feel. So we wanna make sure with wedges, people feel comfortable. We have the jet black this time around, which is our raw finish. Uh, a similar process to what we've used in SM5 with raw black, but this time using a much darker, much richer last. So we get a darker color, and we're gonna see that, that, that uh, dark finish stay on there for much longer. And we also have the uh, steel gray this time around. Steel gray is our nickel finish. So three contrasting you know, visuals, three contrasting for some players feel, and for some players a different sound. Uh, all adding up to make sure that players can really dial in their scoring end of the game.